I'm Tolu Lope Adela Rubalogun. Welcome to NC Exclusive. Now, one of Africa's trading partners that is thriving is the Commonwealth of Australia. Australian investments in Africa is doing well, particularly in the resources sector. There are over 170 ASX listed companies operating in 35 countries across the continent. Australia's two-way goods and services trade with Africa was valued at $11.4 billion in 2018. Of particular interest is the bilateral relationship between Australia and Nigeria, the continent's largest economy. Nigeria is Australia's 42nd largest trading partner, accounting for less than 0.2% of Australia's two-way trade. Total goods and services trade with Nigeria amounted to just about $945 million in 2018. Major exports include wheat, edible products, and possibly animal fats as well. But the potential market is large, not just for Nigeria, but across the continent. And Australia has been making moves to increase the trade between it and many African countries. The Australian High Commissioner to Nigeria, John Donnelly, joins me to look at relations between Nigeria and Australia, how they're faring, and what the future of those relations are. The High Commissioner was once the first secretary at the Australian Embassy in Amman between 2003 and 2006, and the second secretary in the Australian Embassy in Jakarta between 1991 and 1994. He is a senior career officer with the Australian Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade. Hi, Commissioner. Thank you so much for joining us on Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Today. All right. So let's start with this. I found it interesting when I was doing um, a bit of the background on this that in June 2018, an Australian Senate committee submitted a report on the future of trade and business with the continent. Now, of particular interest was that the submission emphasized the importance of recognizing that Africa cannot be described or analyzed as a single market, but is comprised of discrete economies with separate opportunities. How has this submission, as far back as 2018, influenced how Australia is doing business across the continent? Sure. Thanks for the question. Look, essentially, uh, this, uh, this inquiry was done to, uh, to look at opportunities to diversify Australia's trade. We have, of course, a lot of trade with, uh, with uh, the Asia-Pacific region, and uh, this is about being a global trading partner. So looking at 55 countries across Africa, it's important to consider what are the particular interests and the particular needs of countries in terms of exporting. And it's about learning and uh, spending time in the countries to understand what are the uh, desired opportunities to, uh, to look at. This could mean things like what is the growth trajectory of countries, what are the opportunities, what are the goods and services that people in these countries want. And Nigeria, of course, is the largest country in Africa, the largest population, the largest economy, is a prime candidate for that. We're looking at what we can do to expand uh, our, uh, our trade opportunities here, consistent with what Nigerians would like to purchase. Okay, so I'm, I'm happy we've moved into the Nigeria conversation. Mm. So largest economy, largest population on mm. the continent, but we can't deny the fact that there are challenges. The country has a reputation yeah. in terms of how difficult business can be, the mm -hmm. business terrain as well. Mm -hmm. So beyond a large market mm -hmm. that is a potential market, sure. which is oftentimes not enough, let's be honest, mm -hmm. what else makes Nigeria of interest to Australian businesses? Well, we have a lot of uh, mining uh, businesses here already. We've done a lot of work in terms of the mining sector in Nigeria, going way back 20 years when we worked with the Ministry of Mines to look at some of the, uh, some of the mining laws here. And in fact, the Nigerian mining law is based on West Australian mining mm -hmm. law. Uh, one of our Australian uh, mining senior, uh, uh, senior people, Hugh Morgan, was, uh, was uh, over here 20 years ago doing work and setting up with the Nigerian Ministry of Mines mining law that would be effective for here. So mining is one. Miners historically uh, uh, are high risk takers in terms of getting into markets. The rewards are great, the risks are great. And so they are, if you like, a vanguard sector in terms of Australia's uh, entry into, uh, into Africa. And we currently have over $40 billion worth of mining investment across Africa. That's a good thing to hear. And we're going to mm. talk about that because yeah. there's also the possibility of um, expertise exchange as Absolutely. well, technical exchange. Do you That's want to right. go further on that? Sure. Australia, uh, because we have a well-developed mining and resources extraction sector, uh, we've developed innovative approaches to this and the technologies associated with mining, which we call METS, the Mining Equipment Technology and Services Sector, the METS sector, is an area where Australia can particularly assist as well. All right. So if we talk about the fact that there are challenges in doing business mm -hmm. in Nigeria, mm -hmm. um, as you said earlier, the higher the risk, the higher the reward. So yep. the higher the challenges, if you're able mm. to surmount them, mm. the higher the, uh, the rewards for investing in a country like Nigeria. Mm. What do you think are some of those rewards for trade and investment um, from the Australian side in Nigeria? 
Well, look, we have a lot of uh, a lot of areas of expertise that we could share with Nigeria. Uh, I've mentioned mining. Agriculture is another area where we can do some good work together. Again, Australian agricultural innovation and technology could be brought in. That extends right from the beginning with uh, different types of seeds that are more productive, that are drought resistant mm -hmm. to uh, seeds that are higher yielding. It also extends to uh, machines for, uh, for uh, harvesting crops and then ways of managing and getting these crops to market. But also in the new sectors, the new services sectors, we'll talk about a bit later, uh, there are opportunities there as well. Okay. Yeah. So let's get into some of the success stories. So even as there are challenges, Nigeria does have success stories to tell from its creative and technology sectors. Now, for example, fintech startups like Flutterwave and Paystack have attracted investment dollars. With a young population armed with smartphones and mobile payments and more than 60 million people without a bank account, the question has to be, what role do you think Australia can play in terms of helping these growing ecosystems, particularly uh, the financial services sector, the technology sector, and we'll get more into the creative sector in yes, a bit. Yes, of course. Look, Australia is, uh, is a leader in fintech solutions. Mm -hmm. uh, we're number three globally, and uh, a lot of that expertise we could share with Nigeria. We've got a very entrepreneurial culture here. Nigeria has set up uh, continent-leading data privacy provisions, and that's a very important consideration. To, uh, to have the data privacy so that you can bank with confidence and you can provide other financial services with confidence through our various platforms. So in, the, in terms of the creative industries now, mm. we've talked about the financial services sector mm. and the technology sector, but we were speaking off camera yeah. earlier. Mm. You're already telling me about the entertainment sector, the mm. uh, fashion industries, and how much yeah. good and positive reputation they're building for Nigeria outside mm. of the country. They've brought positive attention and good fame to us mm. over the years. Mm. Could we see some collaborations, some exchanges, some whatever it would be, particularly yeah. with these sectors that are yeah. of such high interest to not just Nigerians abroad, yeah. Africans abroad, yeah. and they seem to be, even Westerners, as we would say, sure. are finding a, con a connection with Nigerian music, Nigerian yeah. arts, Nigerian entertainment and movies. Yeah, look, it's wonderful. You know, I've been in Nigeria for three months now, and uh, I've just been astonished and delighted by the, uh, uh, the cultural uh, creativity in Nigeria. And, uh, you know, one of the wonderful things is Nigeria was a cultural importer and our cultural exporter. Mm. Music, you know, you're a, you're a continent leading and, and global leader in music now. You know, Burner Boy getting his Grammy was wonderful. And I wanted to put a plug in for an Australian performer, Sia. Mm. Sia and Burner Boy have got a song yes. together, you know. So we're already collaborating at the practitioner level, you know. But the entertainment industry is a great area, you know. Uh, Nollywood is following uh, on from Bollywood. There's wonderful opportunities there. So Bollywood has matured and expanded uh, the sophistication of their, uh, of their filmed offerings now. Nollywood is on the same growth trajectory. Mm -hmm. Now, people in Nigeria may not know, but Australia, through its Fox Studios, has done a lot of work with Hollywood, and a number of uh, a number of Australian sorry a number of Hollywood movies, badges Hollywood movies, have actually been made and produced in Australia. Star Wars was made in Australia, so we've got a bunch of really capable Australian people working in the film ecosystem who could certainly come and work in in Nollywood and Cunnywood and others to uh, to help build and uh, and develop and mature the industry here. Okay, and you know when we talk about industries, there's government regulations involved, mm -hmm. government policies. Mm -hmm. But when you look specifically, I guess we have to say at these creative industries mm -hmm. in Nigeria, they've been able to evolve and grow and succeed on their own, mm -hmm. sometimes in spite mm -hmm. and despite of government. Mm -hmm. So I think that also speaks to an entrepreneurial spirit. Does Australia see that with, Ni with Nigeria? Very much so. I mean, there's a wonderful entrepreneurial spirit here. And that's very much like the entrepreneurial spirit in the Australian entertainment industry as well. We can do a lot together. We can collaborate on these and, and grow our two sectors together quite well, I believe. All right. So let's look at global regional economic integration. And we've seen that this has been formed to ease trade across countries and continents. Now, after years of negotiations and planning, the African continental free trade area started taking shape, even as further negotiations and digitalization continue. We are in the process of opening African markets under the agreement, starting with a reduction of tariffs on imported goods. Do you think Australia is positioning itself to take advantage of AFTA to be, um, a, a, to be a regional, a continental trading partner, not just in Nigeria, but across the continent, as you open up a one billion plus market of yeah. Africans uh, to other Africans and also to the world? Sure. I think the first thing is it's a wonderful development to have this come into force on the 1st of January this year. So there's wonderful opportunities. What does it mean for Australia? Australia, like, uh, like Nigeria, is, uh, is exposed to a global trading market now. 
And we're both very fortunate. We're middle powers, so we need to work within an international rules-based order. And we're fortunate also that we have two, uh, two of our citizens uh, heading up two of the peak bodies. We have Dr Ngozi yes. as the uh, uh, Director General of the WTO, and we have Matthias Cormann, who was recently elected as the Secretary General of the OECD. The WTO is mo focused on making sure that we have transparent uh, rules-based trading uh, arrangements, and the OECD is working on making trade across countries freer, fairer, and more open. So I think together Australia and Nigeria can do a lot very productively uh, as a vanguard of middle powers to ensure that uh, the trading system is fair and it opens up uh, opportunities across the board. Okay, so let's talk about opening up more opportunities. Mm -hmm. When we look at trade between Australia and Nigeria, mm -hmm. major exports into Nigeria from Australia include wheat and edible products. Nigeria sends crude oil. Mm -hmm. um, it's one of the countries that we have one of those deals with. But according to the UN Comtrade database on international trade, the numbers are not as equal as mm -hmm. many of us would like them to be. So mm -hmm. in terms of um, how we can include or rather increase the, the things that mm -hmm. Nigeria is sending, what needs to be done? What can be done for Nigeria to sort of even out the trading relationship between sure. us and Australia? Well, I think first of all, you need to recognize that it's not always about evening it out. I mean, Australia, for example, runs trade surpluses with some countries and trade deficits, deficits with yeah. others. And so it all balances out as part of a global trading pool. Now, as you say, the, uh, the relationship, the trading relationship between Australia and Nigeria is very much defined by wheat on the one hand and oil on the other, and we can certainly diversify that. We've been talking about the entertainment sector, we've been talking about the fintech sector, there's great opportunities there. The education sector is also a big one where increasing numbers of Nigerian students have been studying in Australia. So there are opportunities there uh, to really harness that entrepreneurial spirit of Nigeria and of Australia to work together in creating these whole new trading opportunities. So let's look more a bit at mm. the education mm -hmm. exchange or sure. the conversation sure. as well. What do you think attracts Nigerian students to the Australian education system? Well, I think first and foremost, it's a high quality system. It's, uh, it's a flexible system. Uh, Australia has developed over decades a, uh, uh, a, an internationally oriented education system. And uh, until COVID, we had, uh, I think, a very high penetration of international students in Australia. We're both English-speaking markets, and that's an important thing. We're both Commonwealth countries. Mm -hmm. We can trade on these strong, long, and, uh, and productive relationships as we go forward. We have a shared system of values, a shared system of government uh, arising from our Commonwealth common relationship and heritage. So yeah. when we look at a lot of relationships Nigeria has, it seems that they're often one-sided. One, one mm -hmm. side tends to benefit more than mm -hmm. it being a mutually beneficial relationship. Mm -hmm. And with such a large population mm -hmm. and such a large youth percentage of that population, Nigeria mm -hmm. has needs that have mm -hmm. to be met. We need partners that will assist us to meet these needs. Mm -hmm. Do you think that Australia is positioned to be one of those partners for Nigeria? Very much so. Like I said before, we, uh, we have uh, a Nigerian and an Australian heading up two of the global uh, peak bodies around, uh, around trade and, uh, and uh, the types of trade we can do. I think our two countries as middle powers have got uh, strong relationships to, to work on together. As Commonwealth countries, we can learn from each other. Uh, I don't think we have uh, the same baggage as some other countries coming into Nigeria. And uh, we're willing to learn and willing to expand. And that's what I'm here to do. <laughs> willing to learn, willing to expand. What do you think Nigeria can learn from Australia? We can learn a lot. I mean, our, our experiences over the last 30, 40 years in opening up our market, yeah. we were a highly protected market uh, until 1975 when uh, the UK joined the, uh, the, uh, the European Union, the common market as it was, and then we found ourselves trying to find other markets. We moved from being a fairly high tariff barrier market to being a much more open economy. And there was a series of steps involved in that. We did that. So our experience progressively in opening up our markets uh, is one that we could certainly share with Nigeria. So if it's about Nigerian businesses finding a foothold in mm. Australia, what do you think is important for them to know in terms of being able to succeed yeah. in the Australian side of things? Sure. Well, the very first thing, of course, and it's the same for Australians coming into Nigeria, do your research. Mm. Work out what the market is, work out what the market opportunities are, and, uh, and be careful and diligent in that, that homework. Now, we did a bit of work recently. Uh, this is the Department of Foreign Affairs and Austrade uh, in terms of looking at... Uh, the different types of exporters into markets, and I'm happy to share some of the insights of that. Yeah. There are broadly speaking three types of exporters. There are the so-called accidental exporters, and I'll explain these terms as I go on. Mm -hmm. 
There are also the, uh, the incremental exporters, and finally there are the born global exporters. So your accidental exporters are people who have been working in a domestic context, they have a client who goes overseas, they continue to service that client, so they become an exporter. Your incremental exporters are exporters who work in a market and they discover that through their growth, the market is no longer big enough for them. Now Australia is 26 million people, Nigeria is 210 million people. Our exporters tend to hit that, that limit a bit sooner than yours would. So that then means that people make conscious decisions to move into other markets. And the third group who are the born globals are perhaps the most interesting and the most exciting of all because these are people who recognise they have a global market for their product from the get-go. This is your entertainment sector, this is your, uh, your music sector, this is your fintechs, this is all the new industries, you know. And they're not so new now, they've been around for a good while, but yeah. the, the way we're promoting them and pushing them now is different. So these ones are born globals. Their market is a global market. And that, so these ones need to work out how they can get their product to market globally from the get-go. So these are the sort of different types of exporters and it's about learning about what your market holds before you start investing in the market. Uh, and people are having to consider digital trade much more seriously because the options for physical uh, trade are not quite as straightforward as they used to be. I know that your background is in working with um, the Australian trade uh, agencies mm. in terms of the markets to go to and things mm. like that. How do you think coronavirus has changed how the world trades, how the world does business? Well, I think it's, it's, it's given a lot of countries pause for thought. A lot of countries uh, do have uh, exposed trade. And if you think about a, uh, a health pandemic, it really restricts the movement of people. Does it change the movement of services or of goods? No, it does not. It also it affords a significant opportunity as we change our, our working arrangements. And this, the, 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 the changes that have been wrought by coronavirus, I think, are going to be lasting. It will change our working weeks. It will change our, uh, our working arrangements. And for Lagosians, it might mean you spend less hours in the traffic every day. I think we would all be happy home. about that. <laughs> yeah. So are there any plans in place that Australia has in terms of sort of um, helping whatever relationship that Nigeria and Australia had to get back to pre-coronavirus levels? Uh, what are we looking at? Well, uh, people talk about a new normal yeah. or a next normal, and I think we have to consider that. Uh, there's, been a, there's been a shift, and I think what we'll look at going forward in terms of uh, our expanding trade will be trade continuing in some of the areas we are working in before, but also opening up a whole new range of areas that we've been discussing today. All right. Mm. We will put a pause to the conversation here. John Donnelly, the Australian High Commissioner to Nigeria, thank you very much for joining us on this NC exclusive right here on New Central. Thank you very much for your time. All right. I'm Tolu Lokwe Adila Rubalogun. There will be, of course, more coming your way. Do stay with us right here on New Central, where we put Africa first.